Hey, this is Joe from HomestudioCorner.com. Last video in our series of <laughs> going through the preferences in Studio One. So we're on the Devices tab under Advanced. Uh, services, we're not going to bother because it says don't bother. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, first one is really cool. Device Editor Follows Channel Selection. That's just a fancy way of saying the plugin that you're looking at, the plugin window you're looking at, changes depending on what track you have selected. So if we have an EQ plugin on these as the first plugin on all these tracks, then if we look at this first EQ, if we click on a different track, you'll see the EQ in the window changes. That's pretty cool, which means if I'm if I want to leave this window open at all times, uh, and whatever track I select, it's EQ. Oops, hang on, shouldn't have done that. If I want to leave this window open, and whatever track I select changes uh, what's in that window, that's pretty help helpful and handy. However, if that's confusing for you, or you find yourself editing, thinking you're EQing one track when you're EQing another, then you might want to deselect that. It's a cool feature to have, and you can turn it off right here. If you turn it off, then if, if you open that window, it stays that window no matter what, much like Pro Tools, the way uh, plugins work in Pro Tools. Audio track monitoring follows record. That simply means when you click the record enable button in Studio One, it will also engage the input monitoring button. So for me, I'm I monitor off of my Studio Live mixer, so I don't need to monitor through the software. So I have that that setting disengaged. But if you're using a normal audio interface and you don't have some other system in place for your uh, creating your headphone mix, then you'd want that to be engaged. Audio track monitoring mutes playback tape style. This is cool for when you hit when you want to record and you're doing overdubs. Tape style means uh, the if you have this engaged while the tape is playing, while the playback is happening, you don't hear what's on that track. So if I'm recording a vocal and I just sang the verse and I want to go back and punch in right when the chorus starts, well, I can go back into the verse and hit play, and if the track is record enabled and I'm ready to record, I won't hear that verse that I just sang. I'll only hear myself through, the, through Studio One once we're recording. Does that make sense? So if you enable this, that's what happens. If you leave it off, then you'll hear what you recorded right up until you hit record and start recording what's next. That's the way I like to do it. So I can hear what I just sang. I can even sing along with myself to get kind of back in that same feel. And then as soon as I punch myself in, then I'm just hearing myself from then forward. So there's there's reasons. Um, the one reason I will turn this on is if I'm recording everything, I'm doing a mix through my studio live and recording all of that to a stereo track in Studio One. In that case, especially if I'm, I've got a mix that's already there, and I'm working on a new mix, and I want to just hear the new mix, I don't want to hear the underlying mix or have them blend together, that would be crazy, uh, then, then I'll have this engaged. Instrument track monitoring follows record. Uh, that just means when I have a, a MIDI instrument, um, as soon as I select that track um, and it's record enabled, then it will uh, allow me to play the keyboard and you can hear what's happening without having to actually tell it to do that. And finally, fader mode, touch and jump. Touch is the way you're used to. Jump is different. So let's say you want to mix really fast. You can come over here and if you just click somewhere, anywhere on the fader, it'll just jump to where, where you clicked. As opposed to the normal way faders work, you have to grab the fader and move it where you want to go. So back to the normal mode, when I click down here, it doesn't move the fader, which is nice because you could accidentally click and change things. You don't want to make that happen. So the way this, the way I leave it is like this, where I have to actually click the fader and move it. If you want to change it, feel free, but that's what it's there for. Okay, that wraps up for now, uh, all the videos on preferences, and we'll see you in the next video.